Hey guys, just jumping on because I, I really want to share this video with you. We were in church this morning and the word was really powerful. It was called The Best Is Yet To Come. It's actually my mum, Pauline, that, that sh that's preaching. Um, I, d I wouldn't put anything on my channel, but this I really feel you guys need to hear. I think it's going to help you. It's going to release hope to a lot of you in your situations. And it's just going to spur you on to not give up, but to believe that God has a better day, a better tomorrow, a better future than maybe the past you've, you've experienced up till now. So guys, be blessed by this. If you haven't already, please subscribe to, to my mum's channel, Pauline Harding. Uh, I'll put a link in after the end of the, the video, the talk, and um, she's got a lot more to share with you. She's just coming onto YouTube now. She's quite fresh to the scene, so uh, give her a big welcome, say hi, but jump over there and subscribe to her. And um, we've got more announcements coming this week, so keep tuned. And thanks again for those who have bought the, the latest EP. It's, it's going to be on its way to you soon, and it's really exciting. It will be available on all the platforms, and it's just a really powerful gospel presentation that I'm happy to share with you and for you to share with others as well. So bless you guys. Have a great Sunday and a great week ahead. And just, just enjoy this sermon now. Take care. But he ended with these six words. I nearly fell off the chair. And if you don't hear anything else I say this morning, if you don't listen, if you fall asleep, if you think I'm boring, that's fine. But go home with these six words. And this is what he said at the end. With all what God's done this week, the best is yet to come. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Amen. I, I went up to him afterwards. I said, I was so encouraged by that, Sean. I said, because that's exactly what God's given me to share mm. um, next week. The best is yet to come. Six words. And I want it. And there, you should have all had a card with it on on the chair. If not, they're, they're scattered around the place. But do you believe that God has a plan for you? All that you're going through right now, that he can turn your lives around to be yeah. part of a bigger plan for good. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. Mm. If not, it's, um, it's tricky getting through the trials. If you don't believe in your heart, there is a bigger plan. And the best is always ahead of you. The best is always there for you. Mm. Last... Um, when did, uh, this time last year it was about this time it was in January actually in December I've been battling as you know this illness thing for three years and God said to me you're going to go into a journey of healing next year next year you're going to come into healing and I was like yes I believe that I really do and then two days later I fell down the stairs and I had what the doctor said an appalling that's the words they use the appalling accident and I was sitting in my front room, I made a bed because I couldn't go up the stairs and I couldn't walk at the time. And I was sitting in the, in, on the sofa for days on end while I was recovering. And but in about the second week, I, I was saying to God, I don't understand this. You promised me this year I'm going into healing and here I am in a worse state than I was last year on the sofa. How can that be? And uh, this... This um, envelope came. I'd ordered something a while back. And uh, this envelope came. And uh, it had a poster or something in it I'd ordered. And when I opened the poster, th this card fell out. And it had my name on it in big letters. And nobody ever... i never seen my name in print because of the unusual spelling. And it said Pauline. And on the other side, it had in, in black and white... This isn't the card I was going to bring it... The best is yet to come. Wow. And you know, as I read those, it was like I heard the voice of God. I've never heard him say those words to me ever before. And it lifted my spirit. And he was like, whatever it looks like now, sitting there, broken bones, bruised ribs, pelvis out, everything, the best is yet to come to yeah. you. And I was like, okay, so I put it on the wall. They just sent me it, just as a card, this company, this Christian car company. And I put it on the wall in front of me to look at it. So I sent off for something else later and they sent me another one. But they were the only two I ever got because after that they changed the, their advert card. And I had one downstairs and then one upstairs. And I looked at that every day. And I said to God one day, how can you say that though? How can you say that? Does that mean 
that after I've gone through this, I'm not going to have any more trials, any more tr troubles, that it's all going to go well with me. And he was like, no, I wasn't meaning that. <laughs> what he meant was, it doesn't matter what you face next year, next week, probably next month. Mm. Because when you love me, the best is always planned for you. Mm. And I started to understand, it didn't matter what plan the enemy had, what I went through, the best was always ahead of me. The, God always had the best for me. Yeah. And I have really, really let this sink into my spirit for over a year, and I'm giving it to you today. But you see, it's who we, whose voice we listen to in those moments, those dark moments, those challenges. Steve, Steve played, we're surrounded. Sometimes I get up in the morning and I feel surrounded by the enemy, and then God has to open my eyes that I'm surrounded by him as well. Yeah. And the chariots of fire that are on my side yeah. blow what the enemy is sending against me. Yeah. And on the video, you saw Bethany Hamilton. She's a famous surfer, if you know her. She was a young, a young girl who was destined to be a champion surfer. And at 13, 14, she had her arm bitten off by a shark. And for a moment, she thought it was all over. Mm. But do you know what? God was whispering in her ear, Bethany, the best is yet to come. Well, Can you imagine having your arm bitten off when you want to use it? Yeah. And God saying to you, the best is yet to come. Mm. I don't know if you believe it. I don't know. If, I don't. I, I don't say that to you when you're going through trials because I think it sounds so glib, yet God isn't saying that to you to sound glib. He's saying that because it's absolutely 100% yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. When you love him, and what did she say? She said the verse that got her through and still gets her through her life was what she was given after her accident by her youth worker who said, Bethany, God says, I know the plans I have for you and they're for good. Not they're not for evil. And so... And so, do you know, she's gone on, she's gone on, she's made her second film last year. She made a film about her life, which went around the world. She's a world champion, she's a mother, she's got two boys. She has written best-selling books. She, there's nothing, she says the only thing she doesn't, knows she can't do is play guitar. <laughs> Otherwise, she's done everything. And she's just brought out a new film. Last year, it's called Unstoppable. Wow. Because she said as she wanted to take on Jaws, which is the biggest wave, killer wave in the world. And it's all about how she, she took on Jaws. She has swum with sharks since having her arm built. She's got a video called Swimming with Sharks. She, to me, she seems fearless. But do you know what she said? I wouldn't have my arm back. Because it's, this is what, this is what's made me, this is what, has made me a worldwide name to reach the world for Jesus. Because Jesus was whispering in her ear at the time, Bethany, the best is yet to come. Don't give up at this point. Mm. You've lost your arm, but there's such a big plan for you. Yeah. And Nick as well. Nick, the guy we know, when he was born, his parents were devastated. They were saying, but they were Christians. How could you, God? We love you. We've served you. And he whispered, the best is yet to come. He whispered to Nick, he whispered to the parents, whoever they heard or not at that time. But he's one of, he's, he's actually in the, um, well, they're both, I think, in the Hall of Fame as ever. He's one of the top motivational speakers in the world. So don't tell me what we go through, we can't be used by God. Yeah, There's cool. always a bigger plan. Yeah. The best is always ahead of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, show me that in the Bible. Okay, I'll show you that in the Bible. In Jeremiah 29, 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Whatever you're going through right now, however dark, however troubled, however surrounded you are, my plans for you are for good and not for evil, to give you hope, a future. And he says, no man's ever seen, heard or imagined the things that God has planned for those who love him. Yeah. And all things work together for good for those who love God and accord according to his purpose. They're just some of the verses that if you sum them up in six words would be, the best is yet to come. Sure. When Jesus was on the cross, 
he said, the, the reason I have strength to go on the cross and go through this crucifixion is because of the joy that is coming in my life. Wow. Because the best is yet to come. He said, there's so much joy up ahead. And do you know what the joy was? You. Mm. Me. That was the joy that he was looking to. Because he knew we were going to be birthed into the kingdom because of the yeah. cross. Yeah. And he said, the best is yet to come. And we're the best. He calls us the best. It wasn't just his throne in heaven, you know. It was about being in relationship with you. So recently I was uh, studying, I'm going through the Bible, one of my favourite books in the Bible. It's called Ruth. And uh, it's a lovely story. I can't really tell you the whole story this morning, otherwise we'll be here till tea time. Mm -hmm. But it is an amazing story. So I decided to do an in-depth Bible study on the book of Ruth because I wanted to learn more. I've read so much, I've studied so much, and I thought I want to. And so I went on to this particular Bible study, and do you know what it was called? The Best is yet to come wow. and I'm like okay you've got me God you've got me the best is yet to come and of all the books in the Bible this is the book that they gave the title to so let's have a look let's have a look at this, these two ladies Ruth and Naomi Naomi was a lady who had to leave her homeland because of economic reasons there was a famine there was an economic downturn we've had many come through they couldn't get a job in their land or because they're refugees or they've had to leave for some reason. She had to leave her land and she went with her husband and two sons to a foreign land. She didn't want to leave her land. All her family were there, her folks. She loved her land. She was God, one of God's people and they were blessed, but she had to leave. And as they walked to a foreign land and she took up residence in a foreign land, she wasn't happy. But do you know what? There was the whisper. The best is yet to come, Naomi. She didn't hear it, but God was whispering it. The best is yet to come. <laughs> so, what was the best? Well, next, her husband dies. <laughs> She's left with two sons. And they got married to foreign women, which God's people should never do. They should only marry their own people. But they got married because they lived in a foreign country to two foreign women. So she had two foreign daughter-in-laws, which again, wouldn't have been her first choice. So, but then unfortunately, the two sons die. And God whispers to her, the best is yet to come. If she had heard God say that, she would have said, are you having a laugh? <laughs> wouldn't she? She would, yeah. she would have thought God was being quiet, live out there. So then, so then she's left with two daughter-in-laws and she hears that she can go back home, there's some food growing there and uh, she'd had enough of this foreign life and she wanted to go back to her people. So she asked, you know, she told her daughter-in-laws who in that culture should have stayed with her. That's the culture, when you're in the family, you're in the family, you never leave. But one of them turned back. She rejected Naomi and said, no, I'm going back to my family. And the other one said, I want to stay. There's something about your God, even what you've been through, that our gods are not like. They had so many gods in that land, but she said, not one of them compared to your God, Naomi. Mm -hmm. She said, I want your God. I don't want my, our gods. She said, whatever you've got, Naomi, whatever you've gone through, your God's still there for you. And so she said, your God is going to be my God and your people are going to be my people and I'm going to stick with you whatever, even if it's till death. So she left with Ruth, uh, Naomi and Ruth and Naomi went back to Bethlehem. And on that road, God would have been whispering to them, so excited, oh my goodness, the best is yet to come. Wow. But they didn't know that. They got back and they had nothing. They got back, they had no food, they had... They probably stayed in a cave or something. They didn't have a home. There was nothing for them. They were destitute. Naomi was a widow, had no sons, no children to care for her. She only had Ruth. So Ruth went out into the field and she collected a few sheaves of barley. She was the lowest of the low. She got behind the servant girls, picking up some sheaves of corn to eat her and Naomi so they wouldn't starve. But, but do you know what? When you've got God and you're doing what's right and you love him, 
it doesn't matter what position you are in life. God is watching. And he sees your faithfulness. And do you know what? She didn't know this, but everyone was talking about her in the village. When they come in, they were like, you see Naomi, nothing left. And, and Naomi said, don't call me Naomi. I'm so bitter inside what God's done, you know, what has happened in my life. I've had so much loss and tragedy and rejection. Don't talk to me about Naomi. My, my life is bitter. But do you know what? When they saw Ruth and they saw her, how humble she was and how much she believed in Naomi's God, they all started talking about her in the town. And it said they talked about her so much that the owner of the field heard about it and said, look, I've heard about you. You're doing what's right when nobody can see you. You're doing what's right when everything's against you. And he said, there's something in that. This, you're really noble. And as a result, he took her and he became her husband. So Ruth went from these scraps of corn to actually owning all the fields mm -hmm. and to being the lady of the manor. So I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. So cool. But you know, God had said to her, the best is yet to come. Then she has a son. But the best wasn't the husband. And the best wasn't the son. Because she had a son and Naomi said, well, that's it now. We've got, we've got, I've got a, a grandson. I'm going to be looked after. And uh, where's Isaac? Is he <laughs> going to look after me in old age, aren't you, dear? <laughs> He's like, and um, so she said, I've got a grandson. I'm going to be looked after. We're blessed. God has blessed us. And, uh, but you know, God's like, no, that's not it. The best is yet to come. He's still whispering it and they're not getting it. The thing is, we are so much part, and I keep saying this, of a bigger plan. You might feel the smallest person in here. You might feel the most unimportant person in here. But you're still part of such a big plan of God that if you love God and keep following him, yeah. one day it will all unravel and you'll go, oh my goodness, I never realised what a part of the big plan I was. Mm. You see, God's got so much more. And he was saying this, you've got your husband, you've got your child, you've, you're owning lands, you've got wealth. There's nothing you want for, but the best is still ahead for you. The best is still to come. Because her baby became the grandfather of King David, who became in the lineage of Jesus yeah. himself. And you see, he was saying, you've got a part of an eternal lineage that's going to shape this world. Wow. And he was like, ever since you started out and you first left your country, Naomi, with nothing and you thought it was all over, I was whispering and whispering to you, the best is ahead for you, the best is ahead. And she never heard it until right at the end. And do you know, she never heard it really because she died and she didn't know how important her grandson really was. She thought he was just important to her. You know, the, the enemy is always telling you that nothing will change, that it's over, that this is where it's going to end, that the future is, you're not going to be like other people blessed because of this, this and this. And it's such a lie. Mm. Because you are part of a great plan of God that will always have the best. Yeah. Into eternity. Yeah. Now, I'm talking about people who love God here and are following him. I'm not talking to those who are not interested. Okay, because I don't know. If this works, it certainly doesn't always work for the non-Christian. So I don't know. But I do know 100% it works for those who love God. Mm. You know, I was thinking, people are like fearing this virus thing. I don't have anything to do with it personally. So what? So what if we've got a virus next year, this year? God would be speaking and whispering in my ear, Pauline. The best is yet to come. Yeah. If I lived, I would give testimony to his healing. If I died, I'd be in there with him and I would be in the best. Yeah. You see, the trouble here, we're such soft Christians. Christians in other countries don't care about death because they're serving God 100%. And they know whether they live or die, the best is always ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't. We think the best is I've got a job. That's the best that God can give me. Mm. I've sorted out a relationship. That's the best God can give me. No, it's not. It's yeah. far from the best. Yeah. The best is always ahead for you. Yeah. You know, 
Barry's done a mission, it was great. And God's whispering in his ear, the best is yet to come. He needs funding, he goes, well the funding's gone, okay, so we'll get you another funding bid. And that's not the best though, Barry. You'll need another funding after that. The best is always ahead of you. Mm. The best is the world, the best is eternity. You know, we've got to think bigger. You're yeah. part of a bigger plan than here. Yeah. You're part of a bigger plan than your resources right now, your income right now. Mm, yeah. There's something going on outside of us that we don't understand. That's uh, an eternal plan of God. Mm, that's really good. It doesn't matter how many trials we have. There's always a better plan for us. Yeah. Do you know, I hear of, uh, I've got friends from way back and those who are serving God, I hear them go through this, that, and the other, and I think, oh, when I meet them, they're going to be like, oh, hello, Pauline, yeah, all life's a thing. Because I hear they've gone through stuff. But when I meet them, they're full of God. And they're like, you know, despite what's gone on, they've got life. The God's using them. They're doing stuff. And I'm like, how can that be? Because, you see, it's not about the trials we're going through. It's about the plan that God's had overall for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to be one of those. It says in 1 Peter, it doesn't matter how many trials you go through in this life, it's how we go through them that determines the outcome. It's good. Yeah. Because he says, when you go through trials and let us, let us when in eternity, you're, he's going to pour out, it says, his praise and his honour upon you mm. in front of everybody. He's going to put you on a stage, do you realise that? And just say, well done, you went through this really difficult time, but you went through it in me, and I just want to praise you now, and I want to give you honour. In front of it, that's what it says in 1 Peter and other places. That's what God has planned. So whether we live or die, as long as we're in God. Mm. I've been challenged this week, really challenged. Um, I don't know, a lot. some of you will know about Francis Chan, uh, this preacher. Um, he's an American preacher. He was um, an American um, me- mega church pastor who gave it up, gave his millions away, and um, decided to just go on the sh- streets witnessing and be in the church on the street rather than just going to church. And um, because he, he was in a mega church, but nobody was getting saved, nobody was getting reached. So him and his wife went around the world, gave all their money away, gave it to orphanages, did different things. So recently, he went to Burma to preach the gospel, which, as you know, is quite a dangerous country. And he said he went from hut to hut, village to village, and so many were getting saved that never heard about Jesus before. And when he went back, he took a team and said, can you check that they really are saved and they didn't just say it? And so many of them were, they were out and out Christians. Wow. And he was like, this just doesn't happen in America. Like, you know, this is amazing. So he went back and um, he said to his wife, this is what I was made for. I have never felt anything like this in my life. He said, this is what I want to do. She said, well, do it. So then sold up again, giving everything away. And last week was his last preach to America before he goes to Burma with his four younger children and his two married children. They fasted and prayed and said, God's told us we've got to come with you. And he said, last time you went to this village, he said he's never really been one to pray for the sick. He's not seen a lot of it in America. And so he believes God can do it, but he hasn't seen it. He went into a village and there was, they brought in this young girl that really, really was seriously ill and needed healing. And he said to God, I felt sick in my stomach. I thought, I don't know if I can do this. And Jesus said, look, I'm Jesus in you. So whatever Jesus I can do, you can do. So just go in there as Jesus. Just go in there as me. And so he went in and he... he put his hands on this child and he prayed for her and she was instantly healed and he was like whoa I haven't never seen that before (laughs) so the next one said can you pray for me so he prayed and they were instantly healed and then he went through virtually the whole village he said he's never experienced anything like it in his whole life he said it freaked him out big time so again he sent a team in before he shared it with the west and said go and check that they can still see those that were deaf from birth that they can still hear and they went in and they said they're still healed so he said, right, okay, this is what, this is what I'm made for. Mm-hmm. This is what we were all made for, to see this mm. and to do this. Yeah. So, so this week he's gone to live in Burma, but this is why I'm telling you his story. I was really, really jealous of him because, do you know what, he's just thrown his life away. Mm. He's not in this. He's not going to have a video camera 
putting him as a celebrity out there, look what I'm doing. He said, people are keep telling him he's mad and that, how can he? Because he might die out there, either from virus or from being put in prison. And he said, so? <laughs> so, he said, if I do, can I just say this to the Western world now? It won't be, I won't have failed. It won't be failure. Yeah. Because he said, the best is always ahead for us, even in death, if we're doing what God's asking. And he said, they say, how can you? You might die and leave your children fatherless. He said, no. Even if that happened, it's not going to be the worst thing. Because he said, I would have given my life. Mm -hmm. And he said, Paul said, I don't value my life. It's God's. If I live, great. If I die, great. I win either way. But you see, we hold on to so much here, don't we? Yeah. We hold on to, to everything here, I think, including our own lives. And, and I, I've thought, I, I haven't heard another man that's had his profile that's done this in recent days, just thrown his life away on, as a seed on the other side of the world and, and knows that anything could happen. But, you know, I thought, well, Francis, the best is yet to come. Let's watch this space. Probably going to have a revival out there if you don't die. <laughs> but if he dies, there'll still be revival, I'm sure. Yeah. The key to the best is yet to come. Is there a condition? The only condition it says in the Bible is to love God. Mm. It's not about our mistakes. It's not about our weaknesses. It's not about yeah, the pitfalls. It's not about the attacks. It's just if we love God. Mm. He says, if you love me, I've always got the best for you. You might not see it right now. And if I came up and said it to you, you might think, oh, that's so hard to believe what I'm going through. But it's true because he said it. Yeah. And one day you're going to come to me and go, oh, my goodness, you won't believe this, Pauline. But I went through this and this. And guess what? God's turned that around. And this has happened and that's happened. And I'm going to say, I will believe it. Because... Yeah. The best is yet to come.